Did you get a new chainsaw or something? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, still. make sure you get those buttons done because you don't want to get your chain caught in that. Button up. Look like a joke right now. Welcome back to Talking Branches. I'm your host and youth pastor, Timmy. This is <laughs> and youth pastor, You gotta Timmy. throw that title in there. Why not? Is it not I, true? It's accurate. It's accurate, it all right, accurate. thank you. Yep. Daniel, this is Daniel. It's me. As many of you already know, uh, we're gonna break down Sunday and uh, maybe talk about some other things. Yeah, who knows where who this knows? is gonna go? Who knows? who knows? We'll find out soon. Hey, so this week mm. uh, you talked about um, the importance of community in uh, keeping a gospel-centered life. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to start out with just talking about what that role uh, that community plays in keeping your gospel-centered life. Obviously, we've talked about community a lot lately. It's yeah. almost as if it's really important, really vital. <laughs> um, yeah. And it is. Yeah. So talk about the role. Maybe, maybe in your life, I, I guess we talked about that a couple weeks ago, but maybe just more of a generalized... Yeah. Well, I mean, I think when, when we think about, um, you know, living a gospel-centered life, which, which is living life in light of the truth of the gospel, of the cross, of uh, forgiveness, repentance, um, God's love for us, God's truth, um, what role does community play in that? I mean, I think of buzzwords that sometimes drive me nuts, like accountability, but that really is what it is. What, that's really the role community plays there, is reminding us uh, oftentimes we need we need a couple things sometimes we need someone to remind us of who we are um, or who we've claimed to be or who mm. we've um, I guess even made a commitment to be um, and we don't get that if we're not in real authentic community with other people who are following Jesus um, <clears throat> if if we're not in a in relationship with other people who are willing we've talked a lot about that too over the last few months who are willing to remind us or call us out or challenge us um, remind us of the commitments we've made, challenging uh, someone, people who are willing to challenge us to, to live and look and act more like Jesus because we've invited them to do so. Mm. Um, it's really hard to live a gospel-centered life because the world, especially right now, it moves so fast. We get so easily distracted um, from the focus or the goal um, or the, the, the true the things that really matter, which is eternity. We can get so overwhelmed and consumed by temporary issues, temporary problems, things that we still need to address because we do still live in the temporary world and we can't just ignore that. Um, but I've found that I've needed people in my life to remind me of what really matters. Because yeah. um, it's easy to forget, it's easy to be distracted. Um, so there's that. Uh, just that accountability, that reminder uh, of who we are and that reminder of who we serve, the, the God that we serve, how big he is. Um, and I think sometimes, especially in, in situations and seasons like right now, we, we need the ability or the opportunity to sometimes borrow someone else's faith. Um, and that only happens when we're in close uh, community with other people. Mm. Um, sometimes we have a hard time... Um, we have a hard time just dealing with a situation. And sometimes someone else's faith for our situation um, gives us encouragement and gives us the, uh, I guess, the resilience that we need. Right, it kind of carries through. you through temporarily. Yeah. 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 And and then the flip side of that, too, is, you know, if, if you're having a hard time and we're in community and my faith is just strong in that season, then I get to allow you to borrow my faith yeah. and allow you to, to, to be encouraged by... Uh, our interaction. So right. it goes both ways. And I think when it comes to living like Jesus, we need people around us to remind us what that looks like, to remind us of the commitments we've made, mm -hmm. um, to hold us accountable. Sure. Yeah, I think it, it's really important too. And I, maybe one of the hardest aspects of community is, is taking that step to, um, to really put or allow, uh, intentional relationships mm -hmm. in your life where, you know, I'm, I always talk to the students about uh, how a lot of the people in our lives that are most influential are just kind of there by default. 
You know, they're there because they're the easy people to hang out with, they're the people that are in our family that we're spending time with anyway. Um, or the people who have accepted us. Right, exactly, right? which isn't always the best thing. It's and not and the so best. taking that leap to where it's like, I'm going to intentionally place this person in my yeah. life or get in proximity mm-hmm. with them as often as I can, whether that's in a small group or um, at church or just like yeah. meeting with them intentionally yeah. uh, on your own. Like, that is a big but very vital step in. It's also how wisdom is transferred, mm-hmm. you know. Like when you're in, when you're in when you're doing life with somebody closely, like you gain the wisdom from their experience. One of the things, you know, being a former youth pastor myself, one of the things I've always I wish I could figure out how to take my mistakes, the weight of my mistakes, and put them in a backpack, mm. and just have a middle schooler or a high schooler carry around the weight of my sin for a day, and say I can actually help you never have to carry that again. Hmm. Uh, or never have to carry that kind of weight into your future. Um, just allowing people to learn from my mistakes. And um, I'm always looking for opportunities to learn from other people's mistakes. Hmm. You know, growing up as a kid, I felt like I needed to learn it all myself. I would even tell my parents that, like, I just need to figure it out on my own. Hmm. Um, but I think when we're in community, we get to teach people from our mistakes and we get to learn from other people's mistakes and avoid pain in the future. Um, and that's kind of that transfer of wisdom. Um, and that can look so different. There's a, I heard a pastor say years ago that one of the things that he was intentional about is he would find people around him who were just a few steps ahead of him, either financially or in parenting or in their career or not, not one person who's the perfect person to follow, but a few people who had certain aspects of their life. Mm -hmm. And he would sit down with them intentionally and ask questions. Um, Ask them, how do you parent your kids the way you do? How did you become successful in your job? Mm. How did you, um, how did, how do you handle your finances? Because I look up to you in that. And so he would get in what you're talking about, intentional relationship with with people who he admired and he'd learn from them. Um, And he'd even ask them permission to learn from and give them permission to speak into their life. And that's a big deal. That is, and I, I think it, you get to certain points in your life too where you, you may be the best at something or the most experienced at something uh, in your life where you can't really go to someone who's like in your town or in your vicinity and say like, sure. I'm gonna learn from them in this field. But the thing is there's so many, I mean, life is so complex with, it's like, okay, so you put together a small group and um, you may be the best at something or the most experienced at something or have the most wisdom in some kind of field, but you're just starting your parenting or something like that. So right. it's like, well, then you have people in your small group who you know have kids that are out of the house and they can talk to you, you know, with a wealth of knowledge about what it's like to parent all through all the stages. Right. Or you, know, you can have someone that's right. maybe experienced experience loss in your group where you haven't and maybe you won't for many years but you get to walk through with them so that way when that happens in your own life you get to like draw from that uh you know interaction with that i mean we have all that in our small group which i love we have just a variety of 19 years old to um you know 60 years old and Mm -hmm. it's just so cool to have the different experiences that everybody can kind of learn from each other it's kind of neat it's really cool, and that only happens when you share life with one another, right. like for real, mm-hmm. not just uh, it, it doesn't happen showing up on a Tuesday night for two hours eating and not being vulnerable. Right. That's for sure. It, it takes, it risks, you have to risk something um, uh, inside of community to be able to, to give and to gain from that community. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's always a scary step, and sometimes it takes a year or two or even three before you feel comfortable, but um, I think that uh, yeah, I think being in community is a huge, huge deal for those of us who follow Jesus. It's definitely a worthwhile endeavor. It's worth the risk, right. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It might be a little uncomfortable at first, but, you know, like you said, you eat enough food with people long yeah. enough and you'll eventually kind of... And eventually someone awesome. will go first and that invites the whole group right. to then start to kind of lean into one another. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's really cool. Yeah, so uh, you talked Sunday, uh, obviously, about living a gospel-centered life and what that looks like. And and I kind of drew from that, you know, the gospel uh, is, is offensive in many ways. Like, mm. it, it kind of disrupts what our, our, like, idea of what life should be like and um, expectations and all that kind of stuff. And, it, and it, essentially, it requires us to change uh, in some ways. 
And yeah. I just want to talk, maybe you and I will both share our stories about like when this idea initially clicked for us, because we both grew mm. up in church. Yep. Um, but for you and me alike, um, that, that whole idea of us like being actually changed um, by the love of Jesus uh, and, and kind of where it clicked for us to really like be intentional mm. about a God or a Christ-centered life. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up too because I think uh, even, even going along with Sunday morning, the, the message that uh, from last Sunday, um, I think growing up, and maybe you relate to this too, there was never a time where I didn't agree with the gospel. Right. And I kind of talked about that on Sunday. Like agreeing with the gospel is one thing, it's not it. but it's not enough. Yeah. Um, and I don't, there's never been a time in my life where I didn't agree that I was broken mm. or that sin existed um, there's never a time where I didn't agree that that Jesus is God and that his death covers a multitude of sins, right? And, and that um, he took our place. There were times where I had more questions than answers, and mm. I still find myself sometimes in that situation where I'm like, man, what about this or what about this? But I never like denied the gospel or denied the existence of God. Um, but there was definitely seasons of life and a large season of my life where I denied or uh, I, I, I agreed with the gospel, but I wasn't applying it. I wasn't owning it. Mm. And, and in some ways, I, I didn't believe that it was for me or that it even applied to me. Um, I know there were seasons where I felt like I wasn't good enough to be loved by God, that I had done, made too many mistakes or hurt too many people, um, or my heart was just too hard. And so there's, there's really no way God could love me. Why would he love me? Why would, why would the gospel actually apply to me? Um, there was, a, there was a, a moment where, and I've shared this before, where I really recognized my brokenness and I really recognized that God, I really recognized what it meant for God to love me beyond my sin. Mm. Like to hate the sin that was in me, but love me mm. as an individual. Um, and that the gospel, the cross wasn't just an idea that um, people believed in or agreed with, but that it was something that actually meant um, that it applied directly to me mm. and my situation, that I was actually forgiven, and that when I repented of my sin, that I was restored in my relationship with God, no matter what I had done, no matter where I was at um, that moment, I was high on drugs, and I remember God just saying, you're more valuable than any of this. I made you for more than what you're, than what you're currently doing. Um, and it took a year for, for my life to really reflect, to begin to reflect that um, in a real tangible way. But it was that moment where I recognized that it, the gospel applied, it wasn't just a thing that existed. It was something that applied to my sin, my brokenness, my fears, um, my struggle. Um, and my relationships. And so it became personal, not just an idea out there, but it became something mm -hmm. for me. Um, so that's where that transition. And then it was out of that realization, it was out of that truth that then things began to change. Mm -hmm. I didn't change and then, and then believe it. I, I realized it applied to me and that gave me, that empowered me to start to make changes mm -hmm. in my life. Yeah, I love so. that. I love that idea. It's so true, too. It's like you you address the mess inside of you, yeah, and then like that translates to the outside. And I have that con constant struggle. I think, especially yeah. with youth, and we have a lot of kids that come into youth that don't have any sort of church background or mm -hmm. religion or whatever. It's just a fun place, cool place to hang out, which is awesome. But trying to uh, separate that the, the gospel is not just a set of rules, and that people live like this or they should live like this because they want to. Yeah. Out of obedience. Out of obedience. Not not out of some like obligation where the yeah. you know it's a, it's obligatory that you have to right. like abstain from certain things and stay away from certain things or or act a certain way. That it's it's through through the work that's gone on inside of you. Yeah. Um, that that it translates to the outside mm -hmm. um, and that it starts in the in the inside first. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's like when you know Jesus looks at the Pharisees and say says, hey, you you wash the outside of the cup, but the inside's yeah. a mess. It begins with the inside. Right, and that um, translates to the outside. And that translates, yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was reading uh, Twitter the other day, which I shouldn't do, but yes. Timothy Keller <laughs> tweeted something, who's my favorite author, and he uh, wrote something about how that there's so, the reason why there's so many um, 
Christians out there that are that are limping, that mm -hmm. are broken because they those are the people that have realized that they need a savior, and that's why there's so many people out there that are seemingly like, well, they came from a lot. Well, yeah, they went through so much, and then they realized, hey, what yeah. a lot of us don't realize, and especially in the United States, like we we've come to the conclusion in our society, we come to the conclusion as a whole, I think that we don't need God. Like yeah. we got to figure it out. Yeah. And I think that's that's what my struggle was. Uh, for uh, it took me um, letting go of my own self interest, my yeah. own my own success, my, my own like I got this, I got this figured out. I don't need God. I can skate through life. I, I, I'm doing this. Um, and it wasn't until I realized that no, no, you can't. Like there's so much more to it. And, and in that surrender is when I finally made you know made the decision to live a Christ centered life. I'm yeah. like it. All of that. Uh, you know, pursuit of everything it, it else. It was in the letting go right. that you were actually empowered to then go and do. Right. Yeah. Which is which is so ironic. Well, and I think I think too. And maybe maybe this applies to you. Maybe maybe it doesn't. But I think in our society, not only not only um, is there like some some sense of pride of I got this, but there's also this idea of I have to have this. Mm -hmm. Like the the way for me to be successful is for me to carry all the burden and carry all the weight mm -hmm. myself and so there is no other option except for me to suck it up pull up my bootstraps and get this done right um and and while in some ways that may be true societally right like you're an entrepreneur so there's there's some of that in you mm -hmm. um there's some of that in me like just suck it up solve the problem and get after it but in our spiritual walk it's the exact opposite mm -hmm. The, the power comes from the surrender, mm -hmm. from the submitting to um, our, the fact that we do need a savior. Mm -hmm. um, and that not only that we need a savior, but that the savior's there. Mm -hmm. um, that I think was the complete picture for me, was I, I, I knew I was broken, but I didn't realize that, I didn't believe that the gospel, that Jesus, the cross, really applied to me mm -hmm. and my brokenness and that so it was in that surrender, I would agree that there was a lot of freedom and a lot of empowerment to then live differently. Right. Yeah, it's so good. And that reminds me of, what was it, 2 Corinthians 12, 10. And he says, uh, Paul's talking to the church in Corinth. He says, that is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness mm -hmm. and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. And this is a guy who had been in prison so many times, shipwrecked. He actually goes through the gambit of how many times he's been whipped and yeah. beaten physically, you know. Stoned. Yeah, stoned. Yeah. All the per And then just the verbal persecution, you know, he'd go to towns and get completely rejected and kicked out. We don't even, can be, we can't even begin to know what that feels like. And then he says he rejoices in all this. Mm -hmm. um, I delight in weakness. He says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Right. And it's just like, that doesn't even make sense. No. And, and it doesn't make sense. And the Christ-centered life, like to us, is counterintuitive. Yeah. Um, trusting him for our strength and giving up of our own strength, our own will. Um, and our own control. Right. Yeah. And even, even as I talk about that to someone who hasn't experienced it, it's like, that sounds terrible. <laughs> but yeah. there's a reason why you and I are here, and it's not because we, you know, it's not because of the paycheck, it's not because of anything else, but because, like, we have lived both ways and realized mm -hmm. this way um, is much better. There's much, much more peace. Yeah. There's more hope. There's mm -hmm. more fulfillment. Yeah. Things just happen. My, re my relationships are better. Yeah. The way I deal with crisis, conflict, hurt, pain, mm -hmm. it's all been changed. It's not perfect. I have, and I, I have so much progress to still be made and mm -hmm. so much still to learn. Um, but yeah, I mean, my life is, my life has been more peaceful and I'm stronger as I, as I release control than mm -hmm. I've ever been Yeah. when it comes to, to, to fear and all of that. Good stuff. So, yeah. Cool. Well, as we wrap today up, um, I would like you to pray just for, cause I mean, that's a, that's a big step to take it's and huge. for people to just realize that, you know, just going to church isn't, isn't enough. That's not the ideal. It's, it's really embracing that gospel centered life. Um, just maybe encouraging people to get to that point. Yeah. Yeah, and even before we go, like somebody who's watching, who's thinking about this and, and having a hard time with this whole idea, like uh, 
it's not a take it or leave it now. It's a part of the journey. It's part mm. of the process. And, and so wherever you're at in that process, continue pursuing whatever that yeah. looks like. If that's like just keep watching online, show up in person for the first time or whatever the next step is, just take the next best step that is yeah. in front of you. Um, but yeah, I'd love to pray. Yeah. Uh, God, I, I'm, I'm grateful for just the relationship that we're all able to have with you, God. The, the healing that comes through a relationship with you. And, and God, I know how scary it is to surrender and submit. Um, I, I don't think that that was, that's never been a one-time choice for me. That's almost every morning I have to remind myself that I've submitted and surrendered to you, God. And I, I, I want to just say that right now, God, I'm, I'm surrendered. We're surrendered. We submit to you. We let go of our control and ask that, that, that you lead us, that you guide us. And God, I pray for those who are listening and watching right now, those who are maybe afraid to take the next step, God, give them boldness, give them courage. Uh, let them be encouraged and challenged to, to continue to pursue you um, and, and, and to, to, to pursue surrendering to their Father in heaven who loves them so much. Mm -hmm. God, thank you for the gift of the gospel, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of truth, uh, and, the, and the gift of grace and mercy that you've extended to all of us, God. Um, I pray for each and every one of us that we would wake up each day and remember that we've, that we've been given a gift, we've been forgiven, and we can live in light of the gospel, not in light of our performance. Mm -hmm. God, we love you, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. All right. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. We will see you guys next week, hopefully on Sunday. If not, we'll see you on Talking Branches. Love you guys. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.